So when it comes to this particular topic, so there is a word called streaming. So we should first understand what streaming means and how you can use that. So you all know there is a request response paradigm, like when you create a web service or even a microservice, all of those is a request and response. So you send a request and you expect a response. But that is not always the case. In some cases, there will be events coming from sensors or various devices that we have to just consume and we have to analyze them continuously to identify some interesting pattern. You maybe need to send an alert because of that or you might need to analyze that and give a concise report from that. There may be various use cases out of that, but this is more, more about consuming events that is coming from various devices. So these events that come from various devices can have its own format. Like for example, it may be a records, just key value pairs, or it can even be an XML or JSON message that comes in a continuous, uh, continuously, but most probably they will have a similar data format, so we can just process them in some piece of logic. So what is the difference between streaming and batch? So if you take batch processing, at some point, the data is generated one by one. It's not all generated at the same time, right? So data is always generated in the source in a streaming way, but due to technical incapabilities, what we basically did was we collect everything together and then we ship them as files. So that's why we had batch processing in the past. But going forward, with the industrial demand and uh, with competitive environment, people are moving towards more towards streaming. So as and when the data is produced, we are immediately going to process them. Even if it is log messages or transactions, like if, if it is log messages and your server is having errors, we immediately want to know. We don't want to know tomorrow. If there's a fraudulent transactions, we immediately need to get an alert about it. Then only we can do something, right? So all the data is generated in a streaming way, so we also need to process them in a streaming manner. So what is uh, uh, stream, uh, streaming data processing means? It's a way of processing data either before we store it or before we basically take some decisions and send an alert uh, um, uh, of that. So it can be logs, sensors, devices, anything from, uh, from, from the source, but we can produce alerts, call services to take some action about it. It can be a, um, a feedback loop, or we can call, insert into a database, or show it in a dashboard. Multiple options are there. Okay, so some of the operations, like uh, it is an event-driven architecture, so everything is an event, so all the events come coming in as an event, so we just process them in an event-driven architecture. And if you want to do streaming data integration, like the data is coming in a streaming way, you want to do some operations and you want to integrate it to another system, so those kind of stuff can also be done streaming data pre-processing, storage integration, uh, streaming data summarization, or if you want to monitor for some K, uh, KPIs and alerts, or notification management, or correlating events from multiple streams, all of those are some cases that we can use uh, with this stuff. And recently, there has been a lot of effort in machine learning, so we can process machine learning model in real time and take uh, immediate predictions, but more than that, there are models that can learn from real-time data and process them in an effective way. So that streaming machine learning is also an interesting and evolving field in this segment. So when we look at the stream processing in, as a market, so it's about uh, 300 to 500 uh, million uh, dollars, and it's uh, growing 30% year, year on year. And there are a lot of positive factors in that particular space, like for example, uh, uh, the analytics and machine learning are moving towards stream processing, like in a streaming world, so that is uh, positive. And microservices and observability, like now you have a lot of microservices, now we are not going to write any more monolithic service. Like er earlier when you have a monolithic system, you can just process them within that system itself. Now the systems are disaggregated, so you should have a governance layer, so all of those are going to emit some sort of an event, so that we can observe that and take some meaningful decisions. So that is going to drive stream processing. And rise of IoT, now like all the devices are sending alerts and a lot of other stuff everywhere, right? So that basically means it's all are sending events and we have a need for stream processing, even if it may be manufacturing or any, any field, like if you're using IoT, then we basically need to do that as well. 
security analytics, uh, real-time ETL, and messaging are also, also some areas that uh, influence this in a great deal. So there are some negative uh, uh, factors as well, like big data, uh, stream processing is also lacking developers. Like everybody talk about big data, but there is less developers who are really knowledgeable on that space. So no, no organizations use that much. So this kind of same problem is also there with stream processing world as well, because there is a knowledge gap that we need to fill to get it going. And its success will uh, uh, drastically depend on analytics and integrated ma integration market. And on the Tyler's keynote, you might have seen the integration has become sexy again. So that basically means there is a lot of hype on the integration market, and that basically can drive stream processing as well. So if you want to build an app that you want to consume events from various places, analyze them, and take some meaningful action based on that, how you can do that? First of all, you can write in your own. Like you can take a language, language like Java, Python, or whatever. You can write all, all, all what you need. But you have to write a lot of template code. You have to, like, there will be a lot of, lot of code that you need to reuse like every time when you, when you write it. So that's not an effective way of doing. There are stream processes that are already being built, and they give you some sort of an interfaces and components that you can build your logic within that. So that's another way of doing it. But even on those cases, there are some common functionalities, like, OK, I want to average five, last five minutes I want to calculate last five minutes average, and if the last five minutes average is greater than 75 or something, I need to send an alert. Or if the room temperature is continuously rising, I want to send an alert. Or if, if I find an, uh, a, a triple bottom pattern in the stock market trend, I want to send an alert. So there are some, those kind of things are kind of common. Sometimes uh, those kind of trend analysis, you might need to do it in several places. But all of those pattern detection is not provided by the stream processor. So you have to spend a lot of time and implementation effort to basically build them. So uh, there are also some proprietary products that give you graphical way of building this, like citizen integrators. So they have identified some common patterns, and they just let you do mix and match some stuff and build it. But they are, there are restrictions, like you can't build any, everything and anything that you want. There is always a restriction, like what, to what extent you can extend that, right? So that's a problem. So streaming SQL is kind of in between all of those. So it is good for advanced, developer, advanced developers, because most of the developers know SQL. So if, you can, if we can write this kind of streaming data also in an SQL way, it would be much easier. So that's the main uh, understanding behind the use of streaming SQL. And it's quite easier to understand as well. But of course, it also has some disadvantages, like when it comes to visualization, like when you have a lot of a big SQL script, it's quite difficult to understand, like, you know, we are disconnecting, how we are joining. You know, when you have a lot of stuff, it sometimes looks a little messy. So if you take the history, like how the streaming SQL and the stream processing has evolved, initially we have databases, and everybody store stuff in database, and then we periodically poll the database to see whether things have changed. Right? So that is, even now, in some systems does that. Uh, then people wanted to build active databases. Like you give a query to a database, and database will uh, trigger you when there is a change, or if that condition has met. So that is a way of being active. And after that, there has been an era like where they talk, took PostgreSQL and they converted into a Telegraph's uh, uh, CQ, which is a first stream processing system that basically you can define a query as and when the data comes in, it, whenever it detects something, it immediately gives you notification, right? So it's not like database, but it's more of an in-memory based system. So this kind of system then evolved into two. First thing as complex event processor, which is predominantly used in um, stock market and real-time systems. So they do a lot of stateful processing and identify trends, patterns, complex systems, and so on and so forth. So that is one type of world. And the other one is a stream processing system, which are not initially capable of doing a lot of complex stuff. They can do simple filtering or simple message transformation and simple type of aggregation, but in a very large scale, right? So these two were addressing a very niche market, like stock market, 
monitoring and alerting and surveillance kind of world. And they are only specialized on those particular fields, and nobody else is actually using those. But in, after 2010, Yahoo introduced uh, this thing called uh, Yahoo S4, and uh, then Twitter Storm. These are donated to Apache, and stream processor processing basically became an, as a big data stuff. So when you take big data, we have um, volume, velocity, and variety. So these are basically uh, focusing on the volume, uh, uh, sorry, the velocity side of it. So as and when the data comes in, we should be able to process them. So Hadoop is basically like, okay, we do batch processing, right? So the, 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 the streaming market, the Storm, basically they advertise themselves as we are like Hadoop, but in real time. So we do map produce kind of thing in real time. So that is how uh, it was um, uh, advertised, and that is how it was built as well. So we can basically see like, some other stream processing systems also came by, like uh, uh, Spark Streaming, Samza, and Flink. So you can find them uh, as active product projects uh, in Apache right now. So big data has initially had map and reduce. You have to write everything in Java code. And they moved away from that to HiveQL. Like, so it's more of a SQL way of doing it. So the stream processing market also followed the same stuff. The stream processing and CEP merged, and they started supporting streaming SQL. So the streaming SQL never had a uh, like standard standard. Like we, they always adapt uh, SQL-ish. So it will use some sort of SQL syntax, and then they basically use it. So Apache Storm, Flink, WSO2 stream processor, uh, Kafka, uh, SQL, and there are multiple systems. They all have now a streaming SQL-based stuff, so which basically makes your life much, much easier than, than before. So if you uh, take a streaming SQL and a normal SQL, the difference is, in the normal SQL world, we have a stored database. The data is stored, and then we pass the query to get some results. But in the streaming SQL way, it's completely upside down. We store the query, and we flow the data over that. And whenever there is a, a matching, you get to know about it. Right? So it is more on real time, and the other one is more on a patch kind of work. So this is the CD streaming SQL that we uh, use within WSO2. So this is uh, um, evolved from uh, CD. So you can see there is a stream definition. So we define a stream, and we give a name and some key uh, and some types for each of those attributes. So it is more like defining a table. So a stream is an infinite length table uh, that doesn't have a beginning or an end. And at any time, you can just process those, that table. So that is kind of a stream. And we have annotations to connect that to sources. So in this particular case, the stream is connecting to an MQTT source so that it can consume messages from an MQTT broker. And then it is consuming a JSON message and processing that. So you'll get more detail about this on the following uh, uh, presentations. Uh, then we can write a query like this is, uh, we are just trying to filter out whether the amount is less than 100 and the name is equals to candy. And then we are trying to do a summarization. I'm going to sum it, group by it, and then I'm going to insert into something else. So this is the first two are kind of how you can define a stream and how you can basically process that uh, in a streaming way. So as and when there is an event into this sweet production stream, that data goes through the second query and it gets processed and the output comes to the low cost candy production stream and then you can consume that and do another processing as well. So this stream processing cannot live on its own. Sometimes we may need to uh, correlate with databases or various other systems to make some meaningful decisions. So in those cases, we can define a table within, this, within the same uh, SQL as well, and then you can join with that table and do various other operations as well. So that is kind of something that we are trying to show afterwards. There are some challenges in this space. So it is not easy to visualize. I, I, I told, told, talked about that earlier as well. And even though it is SQL, for developers it's kind of OK, but even for business users, they will, not, they will find it very difficult like, to understand SQL and do some processing on that. So we'll see how we can uh, basically solve that. 
Apart from that, when it comes to streaming, stream processing in general, we have some problem like its inability to, to handle state. It, you need about five to six nodes to just run that. Uh, and it does not support online machine learning, does not support long-term aggregations, and no visualization tools to do that. So what we have done is we have built this stream processor, which is a product, to solve some of these problems in a way that we think is the correct way to do. Uh, so it is a, a common system that can consume events from various sources. We do all of this processing and produce um, alerts. We can persist data and do things like that. So what we built was, OK, we have this streaming SQL. It is good. It is very easy to use for the developers. So we'll build an extremely good uh, studio that has syntax highlighting, online uh, inline documentation, debugging support, event simulation, uh, um, um, auto completion, and all of those stuff. So that, uh, for a technical developer, it's very uh, efficient. And for a new developer who doesn't know about streaming SQL at all, then we basically built a, gr uh, a drag and drop editor so that you can drag and drop the streaming concepts, you can drag and drop a a source, then you can drag and drop a query, a drag and drop a stream, and then you can basically build your streaming data pipeline. So that is very intuitive for a new user to start with. But I would not say this is the best thing for a business user. He still need to know about, you know, what is this windows, tables, joins, and stuff, which they might not really like it. So for those use cases, what we did was we went a step further, and we took, okay, Usually, what business users are going to do is they are going to change some key parameters. Like, for example, if I'm going to get an alert, so I might, he might say, okay, after five minutes, I need an alert. And sometimes, after two days, they might change their mind, okay, not, it's not going to be five minutes, it has to be seven minutes. Or 55% has will become 60%. So there will be some threshold values or some time calculation, some conditions. Those are the things that will change very quickly in a business that we need to consider for day-to-day -day businesses. So what we do is like you, we let the developers write the base application, and we let the developer template that. So we put annotations on different places so that you uh, those. And then we basically let the developer, the system will automatically create a form-based UI, something like this. Right? So when you create an application, and when you put like dollar price or dollar email, things like that, the system will automatically identify those places and automatically create uh, some UI like this. So for the business user, they just need to come and fill in this form, and it will internally populate everything and deploy. So this way, we are trying to be more close to the business users so that they can go and modify some stuff. So this we, we were able to do that because it's a scripting-based language. So you can basically have some position, like various places in the script, so you can basically uh, update that. And each of these fields are also validatable, so you can validate them and insert uh, into the processing uh, as well. So as I told you, like if you take Flink, Storm, and all the stream processing systems that we have right now, it needs about five to six nodes to run it, right? So for for Kafka to be uh, scalable, you'd need, it needs at least three nodes. And each node to be scalable, it will need another three nodes, like for high available handling and uh, for scalability purposes. And a lot of, lot of internal uh, um, uh, stuff comes into the play. So you usually need about five to six nodes to deploy, even to get a simple system up and running. So what we made is uh, this stream processing system can actually process about 3 million events per second, like if you are embedding that into your system. But when you uh, connect through a network call, it can, it can do up to 100K events per second. So this is without database interactions. If you have database interactions, the performance can go down based on how performant your database is. So if you have a high performant Oracle kind of stuff, it will be performing much better than a low performing database. So what we tried to do was we tried to reduce the complexity and made a two-node deployment. Why we need two nodes, not, not one node, is because if one node goes down, there should be someone else to back up and take, take on the responsibility and take this going. Right? So we should give high availability and zero downtime. So that is the only reason that we need two nodes. Uh, otherwise, we can just work with one. If you just need uh, uh, no data loss scenario, we can even run with one node as well. So this is a very easy deployment. And 
both of these nodes will communicate between each other, share their state in an effective way, and they can process up to 100K events per second. So which is uh, pretty good for a small company to start with. So you can start with just two nodes. And as in when your screen processing need grows, and when you have uh, lots and lots of stuff to do, then you can basically move into a more distributed deployment. So we are not uh, anyway, anyway different. Like so when you do a distributed scalable deployment, then the same problem that other stream processing system has, we also have. So we need scalability, uh, state persistence, and all of those stuff. So this will need about five nodes. So that's, that's not going to change. But we also have a scaled down version. So this scalable deployment, we use Kafka for internal message processing, message uh, um, passing. We have multiple worker nodes. They can join with the uh, manager who takes the decisions and execute this in an effective way. So uh, it is exactly once processing. There is fault tolerance, highly scalable. Uh, and most importantly, if to do that particular distributed deployment, when you actually deploy as it the application that is something like this, it is going to get deployed in a scattered way based on the scale that you really want to do. But if you want to write each and every seed the application uh, uh, that is here and deploy this in, in your own, then you have to manage a lot of stuff. You have to write you know, where are each of these applications going to connect, what is the topic in the Kafka. You have to mess around with a lot of stuff. But what we have done is we basically let you annotate each of these queries. OK, the first query, I want to run it on four nodes. The second query, I want to run it on two nodes. And the system will automatically build a topology, something like that. And it will automatically deploy it into, in, in, in a distributed way. So uh, if you want to basically filter in a scalable way, then you can basically scale that as and when you need. So it basically takes the deployment and management complexity out of your uh, system and we, you have to just focus on the business logic that you want to write and you don't need to really worry about how you are going to deploy it and manage that whole system uh, in this case. So having a big system, there can be bottlenecks. You might have bad code or your database might not be performing. So there may be bottleneck at any point. You can't predict, we can't predict, right? So there should be visibility into the system so that you know, OK, where the system is performing well, where the system is not performing, what is the latency issues, and all of those stuff. So that is why we have a status dashboard that can basically give you information about the whole node, like how the whole node is performing, how many CD apps are deployed within that, how each CD app is performing. And you might each CD app might have multiple queries, how each query is performing. So you can drill down to a very detailed level to understand this performance and bottlenecks or if there is anything, and you can basically tune your system accordingly. So this is the observability part of the system. So you have you can observe everything together. OK, so the next thing is knowing the future. So machine learning is AI and machine learning is the hype in these days. So if you want to run machine learning models, there is a way to do that in stream processor as well. Like if you have Spark, MLlib, or if you're using Python, R, or any programming language, you can basically build a machine learning model out of that. You can basically export that as PMML, which is uh, a standard format that most systems support. We also support that. So you can import that to the stream processor. So in real time, when the data comes in, we use that machine learning model and do predictions for you in real time. So we can do real-time predictions and take decisions upon it. And at the same time, if you have built a model using Spark or TensorFlow Java-based models, we can directly run them in the system as well. Just not, not just chopping onto a historic-based model systems. We are investing a lot on real-time processing as well. So you don't really need to worry about it. You have to just plug it in. The system will automatically learn based on the incoming data. And Whenever it sees feasible, it starts producing results, right? So it, when, it, when it sees like it has uh, con consumed and learned enough, it starts producing results. So it may be regression, classification, clustering, Markov model, anomaly detection, all of those are basically part of uh, some of the research efforts that we have put and built this particular system. Apart from that, um, uh, the long-running aggregations. Like, OK, if you want to uh, aggregate 
there are uh, time series based problems like okay i want to aggregate every second every minute every hour every day you know that's the typical analysis that all all organization need to see how their systems and services are performing right so if you want to build a system and or, or something that uh, you, you need like per second aggregations per minute aggregations and stuff um, the effective effective way of doing that is you know if you are going to do batch processing then you have to wait till the batch processing to finish to know uh, about the results right so that is um, not real time so if you want to do the same thing in real time the stream processing systems are not capable because they try to keep everything in memory you can't have one hour one day data in memory so that data may be huge right so you can't even store that so there is a problem of okay the batch processing is slow we can't also have do it in fully real time so there is a architecture called lambda architecture which is kind of a mix so we have previous results in batch mode and the current results in a streaming mode so we have implemented that within the system so as and when the data comes in the current values the current second current minute current hour is immediately get updated in the system and after every hour or some this in memory stuff are dumped into a database right so then if you ask the system okay give me um, uh, last hour results by per second granularity you will get graph some of those data will come from real time in memory systems some of them will come from database you really don't need to worry about it right so the system will automatically combine the real time and batch data and give you a holistic view of how things are happening right so that is that is what this basic uh, aggregation uh, does and we have also implemented a, a dashboard that has uh, um, intergadget communication and all of those uh, systems together so that they can uh, work together and build a cohesive uh, system so that your business users can see real time analytics or some sort of uh, uh, statistics uh, with that and we also have uh, a way of building these gadgets through a click through uh, widget generation wizard so in a nutshell well, what wso2 stream processor is right so it is a lightweight system uh, the siddhi itself is just 3 mb the core so it is very very small so uh, you can even embed that into an android phone uh, and run it so so that is our core and we have built the system around it so it is very lightweight it can start and run very faster and it is best suited for streaming analytics streaming data integration you know you want to get it from one place you want to do some processing and put it to another way in a streaming may way and adaptive intelligent framework like if you want to take intelligent decisions and the data is coming and you are changing every time and you want to take decisions then and there in an efficient way then this system can do that and it has a streaming sql for developers and you we also have a drag and drop way of building streaming sql so that is uh, would uh, make your life much easier you can start small with just two node and you can scale up as your business grows right so you don't need to uh, uh, commit to a lot of resources in the beginning and we have machine learning streaming machine learning and long term aggregations and we also have business friendly uis not only the dashboard or and the business rules editing framework that you can build so we have some sessions on um, the next um, i think you, we have some sessions on like how people have used these systems and what what they have built so on and so forth and late, later you will also find a uh, session on how you can write these queries and streaming sql to get some meaningful things done yeah that's all from me thank you